second day in Sydney and I'm going to go and have a look at something like a national park. I forgot the name of it, but I'll put it on the screen about now. It's a bit isolated, but it's nice. And since there's a 7-Eleven here, I can grab a coffee. And stupid coffee machine was out of order. So we'll get coffee somewhere else. hard to get a coffee. I picked up a cappuccino here at McDonald's, five dollars again, which was quite expensive. But what do you do? I just can't believe the coffee prices in Australia. I mean, it's very expensive, like five dollars for a coffee. If you know, it's um, just think of the markup on that. Oh, there's, a, there's a bit of a bumper there. I think someone's had a pretty good accident here somewhere. He must have been speeding. There is no way you can have an accident at 50, 60 k's an hour on this road. Like, it's the corners aren't that sharp. So, I don't know. It looks like an expensive car. It looks like it might have come off a Land Rover or something. But, yeah, I'm surprised he didn't pick it up. Before coming here, I read up on flying of drones with the National Park in New South Wales because I know in Queensland it's just totally banned full stop. And for down here, it's surprisingly not banned. It just says um, basically to ask for permission before going into a park. And the other thing I discovered while Googling that is CASA actually has a very good app on drones and it basically tells you where you can and cannot fly a drone in, in Australia and I love that because before it was always like oh well, I think I can fly it here but now this, this just makes it so much easier because there's a lot of small airports that you don't know about like even here in National Park um, I thought oh, well if I get their permission um, I'll be fine to fly the drone because it's not near an airport but I actually didn't realize that yes there is an airport for seaplanes within the cove so yes you can fly the drone providing you speak to the owners of that seaplane now honestly I, I don't know what their number is I'm not going to bother with that because if I go on the other side of this national park there's more beaches where it doesn't fall within the safe within that airport circle and i'll just be fine to fly there providing it's okay with the national park people uh so you have to pay to go into this national park i think a while ago it was about 12 dollars so it might have gone up might have well yeah it might have gone up it certainly wouldn't go down but um yeah, and the good thing is they actually accept credit card, which is surprising, but handy and good. Still $12 a day, which is good. So there should be like a man booth further up and hopefully they can let me know about the drone issue. I don't know what I'm going to do if there's no one there and then I guess I don't have permission, so I can't really fly. Okay, thanks. Thank okay, so no drone. That's a bummer. So there's some thing on the road, I guess. Maybe a tree falling down. Oh, shit. Park and leave the car here. 
and then go for our trekking walk. I'll put the, the um, exact GPS location in the description. So you should be able to copy and paste that in Google Maps and it'll bring it up exactly where it is. Here we are, it's not um, raining anymore but it's fairly windy. So these World War II fortifications, they, there's pretty much nothing left of them, it's just a few um, desolate buildings really. Uh, it's a railway, it's built on some weird angle, and yeah. So let's go see what's left of uh, the World War II fortifications. So here is a map. I don't know how that's going to come out, hopefully good. So we'll make our way all that way and go there, then there and there. Hopefully there's a decent track to get to both. My first obstacle on the road is a fallen tree. I think there was a pretty big storm or something that was, that went through here a few days ago, so it's very wet. Hey, that looks nice. I wonder if there's anything there. So there is a track, a bit of a track, so people have definitely walked up here. But no, it doesn't look like there's actually no graffiti or anything, which is quite surprising for Australia because everyone loves to draw. Let's keep going. Now continuing down here, this is a bit of a steeper section than before. Like, pretty steep. Definitely don't recommend you bring your kids here. And really, really get some good hiking shoes. Because you'll really slip if you wear. Just don't even think of coming here in thongs. You actually, yeah, proper shoes. This must be where the ladder is that uh, was on that sign. Yeah, I wonder what that's going to be like. Oh, there's the first of those bunkers. It's visible now. Thing. This platform feels solid. Have a look at this. It's 
very windy, so there's probably a lot of wind noise. I haven't bought that microphone or anything to reduce wind. Well, that's where we'll be going, and then that one further down. That's that seaplane that's landing at that airport that I would have had to check with had the park rangers said I can fly in here. And there's some yachts. That's the ladder. It starts here and down we go. It's not that scary, I thought this would be worse, but this is just like a ship ladder pretty much. So I think this was like the little command bunker, if I remember correctly from that sign. Like the door's pretty much stuck in that position. There's nothing like there's a hook left. It's like a bit of graffiti, but it also looks like someone's actually cleaning this graffiti because some of it does appear to be rubbed off. So this must be getting maintained to some extent. Like th that might have been another room down there at some point. Right. More graffiti. This graffiti here is a lot more legible. So it looks like it goes back that someone was here in 77. So it just gives you an idea how long this has been here. Or 1968, Jesus. A Zindo bushwalk. That was fairly recent. I have no idea what these numbers are. Uh, it looks like it looks to be two water bottles left. Pretty intact. And then this. Let's put it down here so we can better read it. It looks to be a book of uh, people who visited this place. Um, naturally no one's left a pen, so I can't put my own thing in here. But it's nice. It's not often you actually see something like this survive at a place.
I spoke, put it down here so it doesn't get, oh, there is a pen in there, I think, so um, I'll put my name in there. So let's start with this one on the left first and then we'll go to the other one. So for reference, there's that little spot, the stairs there that I walk down and then the little command post. And now this will be one of the gun batteries here. I don't know why these aluminium pieces are here. I wonder how this door frame ended up like this. Unless they ripped out the original door that was here or something. This looks nice. A bit more graffiti. It's not like... I actually don't mind this graffiti because it's not like that destructive graffiti that you find everywhere else. This is people just leaving messages that they were here. But how good is this? And that's where the gun, gun mount would have been. I don't know if that gravel was there originally or was it put after. If anyone's worked in any military that's watching this, it'd be interesting to know. There's another Homer Simpson's been here. And just more graffiti. Wonder. What's down here? So these just look like storage spots, I suppose for ammo really. There's nothing else there. And it's obviously been fenced off. I imagine it'd be the same on this side. Yeah, storage spots. What the hell's this? 93. So now we'll go to that other bunker. So this must be that other place where they held the um all the ammo for the guns but it's obviously must be in bad condition because they've locked it off and not sure about this wall but this is a nice neat sort of rock wall I just can't work out was it here actually it might have been put here when this um, gun turret was built because it would have provided you sort of a good safety to walk to the ammo without being shot. So just before we go in there let's see what else is around here. Alright so that's fenced off. I know obviously people have jumped the fence but I won't. She 
you look at that neat rock. It's like literally being hollowed out. See, the design of this appears to be different because they sort of have these little storage areas up here and then the gun turret there there's nothing underground so I'm not sure exactly why that was done but there's gravel there and I'm not sure what was up here I'd imagine this might have been sleeping quarters I don't know and this one has a lot more graffiti even on the ceiling Now I'm going to walk back all the way to the top and then go for a hike to show you those two beaches. This way. So here is the sign and where everything is. So there's the West Head Beach and we'll go to Resolute Beach. And then on this path it's just a cave with uh, a few hands um, but what I'll do is I won't walk to the cave because it does take a very long time I'll go to the two beaches, I'll come back, I'll jump in the car we'll drive here, there's a little picnic spot, I'll park there and then I'll walk to the cave it's a hell of a lot quicker than walking because walking will take one hour and then getting uh, sort of walking from there back to the beaches I'll be stuck for about three hours here now this spot looks fantastic now you could comfortably of course when it's not this windy like have a nice picnic or something on this rock because this view you get from here it's just fantastic and I mean there's plenty of other rocks to sort of stop you from falling all the way down and if you can see it through the trees that's the beach that we're going to well that's the first beach anyway but this is amazing like you could even comfortably sit down there and hide from any rain so we're getting closer to the beach see that waterfall there well in the middle of summer that was just barely trickling you know I mean that gives you an idea of how much rainfall is happening now so we're near this first beach but what I'm going to do I'm not going to go to that one straight away I'm going to walk to the one that's further away then we'll have a look at that one and we'll stop on this one on the way back so as I walked along I came upon this but what's more interesting 
is it looked like someone's tried sort of, I don't know if this, this carve out easily or not, but that's just like dust. So this is probably the work of humans I'd say. Still very windy, but no rain, which is good. Rain would be bad. Okay, so here's another lookout post here. Well, I'm not sure it's a lookout post, but judging by the size of it and everything, it looks uh, looks like one. It also looks like it's been dug in pretty well, so I don't think I would be able to get into it or anything. Oh yeah, we can. It's over the other side. Actually, it looks like people have walked up and down that way, but I'll skip that route. Huh. Must have missed this one last time I was here. So yeah, once again, a lot of graffiti, nothing left, bill's gone. Okay, so we continue our walk. So this spot here, sort of if you lose your balance or something, you will end up going down there. I come in, but the good thing is the footpath's not narrow or anything. So you should be pretty right. But yeah, if you go tumbling here, like all the other spots, there's you know, 3,000 trees, so chances of you missing everyone and going straight onto the rocks, it's almost impossible. But here, by the time you get to a tree or something, you could end up with a few injuries. But apart from that, this track's great. This is new, this wasn't here in summertime. I'm sure they'll remove this tree, but in the meantime, it's a bit of a pain. Here is the other beach down here. So we're nearly there. For another five, ten minutes. Yes. I think with being more exposed out here, the wind's just going crazy. And we are here, it's still very windy.
It's also you have a nice waterfall here. That's all the rainwater. So you have the rainwater mixing with the sea. And now it's started raining here. So I need to get my umbrella out. Okay guys, so I never really made it to the second beach because it just started pouring rain. So I quickly almost sprinted back to the car. Normally a bit of rain wouldn't bother me but on this new Sony camera I got, well the camera's weatherproof, this particular lens I have isn't. So I didn't really want to spend too much time getting the lens wet. Here is that spot that has water on road. This will be interesting. Holy shit, it's even gone deeper now, like it's nearly all the way to the other side. So I'll slow down and stay on my side of the road. traffic lights like fuck honestly like what was going through her mind you know it's a good thing that the driver heading in the opposite direction had quick reaction skills and in case you're wondering yeah it was a female driver and she had blonde hair 